Hello everyone, welcome back to another Bio with Mr. Brown video. In today's episode, we will be discussing Unit 4, Lesson 2, DNA Replication. So please make sure you have your unit notes out, something to write with, and let's get started. So in order to talk about DNA replication, we're going to have to go back and revisit our knowledge that we learned in Unit 3 specifically talking about mitosis and meiosis. So we learned that cells in order to grow and divide, they need to replicate themselves. And this means that they need more DNA. So when we think about DNA replication, all living cells are going to replicate their DNA. And this is the process of copying that DNA. So that is what we're learning about in the, this lesson, how cells go about copying their DNA. So thinking about DNA replication and thinking about mitosis or what we learned about mitosis, all of this is going to happen during that interphase stage in mitosis. And remember, this is before the cell actually enters into division because we got to make sure we have enough DNA that goes into the daughter cells that are created. And so this process is going to happen inside the nucleus of the cell where the DNA is protected. And the whole reason as to why we're replicating the DNA is so that we can have that information to pass on to the cells that we are creating. So in addition to remembering the different phases of mitosis, also you're going to be required to know that this DNA replication and how we are talking about it is going to be happening in eukaryotic cells, cells that have a nucleus. So a different process, which we'll discuss later, happens in prokaryotic cells, and that's called binary, fus binary fission. And also you have to know or remember that interphase is the longest part of mitosis. It is the part where we're replicating all that DNA, the cell is growing, so it's going to take some time for us to get through. So now that we have a refresher on why cells undergo DNA replication, let's talk about how they undergo DNA replication. So there are four different stages or steps that you are going to need to know. And you are going to need to know what is going on at every single step, including the things that are involved. And so the first step is that in order for DNA to replicate, remember in lesson one, we talked about DNA is wound up. DNA has to unwind itself first. And what is happening is helicase, which is an enzyme or protein, we're going to talk about that later, unzips DNA. It literally unzips or unwinds the entire molecule. And so what you see on your screen right now is the enzyme or protein helicase coming in, separating the two strands of DNA. And so after the DNA strands have been separated, another enzyme is going to come in. And this enzyme now is called DNA polymerase. And DNA polymerase's main job is to add those complementary nucleotides to each strand of DNA that is being unzipped. And so remember the different parts of a nucleotide that we learned about in lesson one, the phosphate, the base pair, as well as the ribose sugar. So DNA polymerase is coming around to add those complementary base pairs to the new strand of DNA. And it does this, it gets help from a, another enzyme called primase. And primase's job is to come in there and put pretty much little mini starting sequences onto the DNA being unzipped so that DNA polymerase can know which, enzyme, which nucleotide base it needs to attach. It's also important to know that while DNA polymerase is adding those nucleotide base pairs, it is also fixing proofreading and fixing errors that may have been made. So it's going back and checking, does this base pair actually belong here? If it doesn't, let's fix the error and move on. And so at the end, this yellow thing right here that you see on your screen, that is representing the DNA polymerase coming in, fixing errors, and continuing its path along, still adding those nucleotide base pairs.
And so then at the end, once DNA polymerase has finished, we will have our two new strands of DNA that will separate. So from one strand, we now have two new strands that we created, all right? And so what you really need to know is that we have DNA being led by primase coming in to add these nucleotide base pairs that is going to create two new strands of DNA for us, all right? So in your notes right now, you should see a practice page and where you're going to practice making complementary strands of DNA. And you already know how to do this because this is based upon the same principle that we learned in lesson one, where the DNA base pairing rules are adenine pairs with thymine are A equals the T. And then we have cytosine pairing with guanine are C equal G and vice versa. So if you are having a little bit of difficulty or need to remember the base pairing rules, flip back over to lesson one. And so what we are going to do in this practice example is I am going to give you an original strand of DNA and I want you to write the complementary strand code. So let's do the first one together. So we see the original strand, we see its code, and we are going to start writing the complementary strand. So A is going to pair with T. T will pair with A. C will pair with G. A will pair with T. T will pair with A. T will pair with A again. And this keeps going on and on and on until we get our final complementary strand of DNA. And so that is what DNA polymerase is doing. It is DNA polymerase's job to make that complementary strand. So in your notes, what I want you to finish doing and come to class with done is I want you to do the next two problems on your own. So take a minute. You can pause the video here and remember how we did that first example and follow those same skills to do the complementary strands of DNA for the second two. Okay, so let's do another example. In this example, on this page, you will see DNA being split and you see two, and a, two DNA uh, polymerase enzymes pretty much reading and creating or adding the new base pairs. So here's the original sequence that we have been given. Pause your screen and see if you could come up with the complementary sequence for this sequence. And here's the complementary sequence for this one. So if you got this complementary sequence, you are a DNA replication master. One thing that you need to know about the whole process of DNA replication, it is semi-conservative replication. So what that means is that each daughter DNA molecule has one new strand and one old strand. So you can even think about the word semi-conservative. Semi oftentimes means halfway, not fully. So it's not fully new strand of DNA that we are creating, and it's not a fully old strand of DNA. And the word conservative tends to mean old, okay? So semi-conservative means we have something that's halfway old. And if you think about the process of DNA replication, our whole thing was we wanted a new strand of DNA. And we kind of have that. It's just that we have the old strand creating the new strand. And so if you look at this image that's on your screen, we started off with the old strand of DNA. That's an image number one. Image number two is helicase coming in and breaking up that old strand of DNA. And then DNA polymerase is going to come in and add those new bases to that old strand of DNA. And then in step three, we have our two new pieces of DNA with one old strand and one new strand together. And that is semi-conservative replication. So remember, as a takeaway, semi-conservative means that we do not simply create whole new strands of DNA. We take an old strand and then we form the new strand and so we make hybrid pieces of DNA at the end. We have two new pieces that are made up of the old strand and a new strand. 
And so let's learn by practicing. So you have these couple of questions and what you have to do is pause your video and then take a moment to discuss or answer whether these questions are true or false. Please come to next class with these having been completed. So one thing that we've been talking about throughout this entire lesson, this particular lesson, is enzymes. And what you need to know about enzymes are that they are a special type of protein. And proteins have specific functions in our body. And proteins carry out pretty much everything there is to do within our body. And as an enzyme, they act as catalysts, meaning that they are going to help speed up reactions that happen in our cell. Or they even control these reactions that happen in our cells. And the two enzymes that we have talked about in lesson two that you do need to know are DNA helicase and DNA polymerase. And if you flip back in your notes, you can understand how we have discussed them. Remember, DNA helicase's job is to unzip the DNA, and DNA polymerase's job is to add on those nucleotide base pairs to the new strand, to the old strand. And so what you will see on your screen right now is how these enzymes are working. So as you can see, and they work together, as helicase is unzipping the DNA, that's that blue enzyme in the front, unzipping the DNA. You then have this big enzyme that's in the back or off on the sides, adding those new nucleotide base pairs to the to the complementary strands of DNA that are formed. So at this point in time, I want you to pause your screen and I want you to take a look back over your notes and I want you to come up with your own definition of helicase's function as well as DNA polymerase's function in, DNA repli in the DNA replication process. So take some time, pause the video, and maybe review your notes. So at this point in time, we have finally finished our unit four lesson two notes. Congratulations. Please remember to come to Nat's class with the practice questions having been done in their entirety. And if you have any questions or are confused about any part of the notes, just highlight it or put an asterisk beside it so you can remember to ask one of the biology teachers about it when you see us. As always, be safe and I look forward to seeing you in class next time. Have a good weekend.